To say that Saw almost two decades later had a massive impact on the horror genre would be a massive understatement. This is a movie that was made for a micro budget at the time of only $1.2 million, spawned from a short film released only one year prior. It was shot in 18 days and became one of the most profitable horror movies at the time. And it later became a franchise spawning eight sequels, two video games, and even had a book about the philosophy of the Saw films themselves. But now there is another entry hitting the big screen later this year on September 29th with Saw X, the untold story of Jigsaw before he died and when he went to seek experimental treatment, but that treatment didn't go exactly as planned or how it was intended, so therefore he created another game for unsuspecting victims and here we are with the 10th entry of the Saw series coming out later this year. Hi guys, my name is Patrick. I am a massive fan of the Saw series if you didn't know, as well as horror movies in general. I like the Saw movies probably way more than I fucking should. I own three copies at least least of each movie, and I also do own physical copies of both Saw video games. For some fucking reason. But I am a massive fan of the Saw series. I've got that disc plate behind me of Jigsaw's face. I've got a spiral from the Book of Saw massive cardboard standout poster that was actually stationed and on display at my local theater in 2021. It was just given to me at random by one of the people who worked at the cinema when they were putting out promotional posters and everything the week leading up to the release of F9. You know, Fast and Furious 9. Now it's mine. I like these movies probably more than I should, as I said, probably because of the whole violence aspect behind it. I'm a gore hound. I love the philosophy of Saw and everything like that. I enjoy all of these movies for one reason or another, whether it's for the good or the bad. There are the movies that I like based on the characters, the traps, the plot, the story, everything. And then there are the ones that I enjoy still because they are very entertaining movies, all of them in their own right. But some of them are more hilarious than good. And I'm okay with that. But leading up to the release of Saw X later in September, I wanted to re-review one of these movies every single week and talk about these movies however many years later. The original Saw was released in 2004. That's 19 years ago now, which is nuts. I was only two when this movie came out. I was two. I was a youngins. But I wanted to review each of these movies, even though I've done that on the channel twice before. One leading up to Jigsaw, which I don't think those videos are even available for everyone to watch anymore. And also leading up to Spiral from the Book of Saw. But I sort of wanted to review them from a more mature mindset because that was just me fanboying But I want to look at these movies from a subjective standpoint and look at each movie However many years later how much they've held up have they improved over the years and also go into a little bit of a deeper depth Into what each movie stands for and the things that work and the things that don't because I really enjoy these movies And this first movie in particular had a massive impact on me as a child the original Saw movie I actually watched for the first time when I was only six years old. I remember it very fucking clearly my mother was away and I had to stay at my grandmother's because my mum you know had a work thing going on so I stayed with my grandmother but I couldn't sleep and while she was asleep she was dead to the world she's she, she, the woman was like fucking 70 something at the time but I decided what would be a good idea let's go out at two o'clock in the morning to the living room and let's turn on the television and lo and behold there was Saul now I don't exactly remember what time of the year it was or anything whether it was leading up because I know in Australia at least whenever a new franchise movie comes out they usually play play one movie every week leading up to it on television and everything with ads included. But I don't exactly remember. I just remember it was like two o'clock in the morning. I was being looked after by my grandmother. She was dead to the world. And I sat down as a six year old and decided let's watch Saw. Not that it was my decision to seek it out. It was just on television. I remember that the first scene I saw just so happened to be the iconic reverse bear trap sequence. And I was hooked from there on. Granted, as a child, it was traumatizing, but there was something oddly fascinating about these movies that even though I never really watched the Saw sequels until many, many years after, I don't think I watched the Saw sequels properly until in the later part of my primary years. I think I was like year five or six at the time, but I remember always looking up the traps on YouTube. I remember at the time always looking up, you know, the traps and everything and the stories. And as a young kid, I was just fascinated by them. I think it was the gore that fascinated me at first, but when I finally started watching these movies, properly from a more mature and not necessarily adult. I wasn't an adult at the time by any means. I was a young, I was still a youngins. I was around my teens and everything. I started looking at them a little bit more in depth. And what's fascinating about this first movie in particular, about the stuff that you can really go in depth with, it's the fact that the first movie, Jigsaw's sort of irrelevant to it all. Like, he's there, don't get me wrong, he's the one that put Adam and Dr. Gordon inside of the trap. Like, he's the one that put Adam and Dr. Gordon inside of the bathroom for their test, where they have to last until 6am, otherwise, 
You know, you know what fucking happens. Dr. Gordon's family will be killed. There's a mastermind behind it all. And yeah, Jigsaw's doing this. We get flashbacks of the reverse bear trap, the razor wire sequence. But other than that, he is quite irrelevant to the story up until the ending of the movie. And what's fascinating is that this takes the route with a serial killer type horror movie or murder mystery story in a similar way to what Alien and Predator did for action and sci-fi horror. Jigsaw is barely in this movie. And when he is in the movie for a first time viewing, he is in shots that you wouldn't even suspect that to be the killer. Like I remember for the first time watching this movie all the way through and I still didn't pick up on it because this scene happened before the reverse bear trap, but seeing Dr. Gordon and his med students and everything and the really flirty uh, student that he was sleeping with and everything cheating on his wife with. But what I love the most is that he is just there on the table and they mention his name is John Kramer. He has a frontal lobe tumor and you wouldn't even pick that's him. Even though there are hints in the movie that it is in fact him or that it's the guy in the bathroom. There are very subtle hints, even stuffs on the tape, such as when you've got that much poison running through your blood, you all you want to do is put a bullet through your head, essentially. The guy in the middle of the bathroom turned out to be Jigsaw, faking his own death, but it was more a reference, in a way, to the cancer that he is suffering from and how he was once rehabilitated from committing suicide. But I want to I want to review this movie, first of all, though, on a stance of what we know. What I mean by that is, like, say Star Wars, for example. If I'm going to compare two movies in the Star Wars franchise, I'm going to compare it to the points of which we know. So if I was to compare A New Hope to Force Awakens, for example, or A New Hope to The Phantom Menace, in regards to what's better, what's worse, what's more solid, I'm not going to go based on the movies that followed in their respected trilogies. I'm going to based on those films alone and what we knew in those set films. I'm going to do the same for these reviews. I want to try and go into these on a, with a subjective mindset and only review them from this perspective of the movie and what we know beforehand, not afterwards. So I'm not going to compare Saw 1 to Saw 2 or Saw 3 or Saw 4 to the best of my ability and so on for the reason that this first movie doesn't even need those. This movie can stand on its own so well because it is so brilliantly and meticulously crafted. There are so many things in this movie that just work for me in so many different ways. Like, for one, the traps aren't even that violent and aren't a key focal point. It is more a story on these two men getting to know each other and understanding what exactly they have in common. The more they're awake, the more they talk, the more they discuss and unravel about what is actually going on, the more they realize how related they are in one way or another. And that is something that a lot of movies have done in the past, but most have fail to do to such a capacity and do it so believably as well and it, it's it, it does it in a way where it shows key scenes prior that give you an idea of their occupations and their past aside from adam like you got dr gordon you get a lot of flashback sequences with dr gordon in regards to him getting taken by tap and sing in regards to witnessing you know amanda's testimony behind the two-way mirror seeing the scene with the reverse bear trap you also get the scenes of him at home with his family and what this does so well is it shows that while one character has something to fight for something to choose whether to live or die there is a reason why the other character has been put in the position he is. The one that is to be shot dead and sacrificed by the time the timer hits whatever time it is going to. Adam really, and this is a point that is brought up in a later movie, which I'll talk to when we get to it, but Adam really has nothing to go home to other than a shithole apartment with a shithole job. And here I woke up in another shithole. Adam is very much so the loner character in this movie who really doesn't have much to fight for. But at the same time, it does show how the human spirit, how human nature, when we are faced with death, we are forced to fight with it through fight or flight, you know, experiences or reactions, if you will. Like, this movie does that so well due to the two perspectives and two polar opposite characters we are presented with for 90% of the movie. It's such a brilliant way to tell the story, in my opinion, so therefore you do get to know these characters in one way or another, one better than the other, of course, but you understand why this character has been put in this trap and why these two are pa paired with each other as well in this room. There's also the other traps in the movie, and in this movie, for the most part, people deserve to be in their traps, and for the the most part, you know, Jigsaw gives them a fair chance. But for the most part, I am going to say those who have been complaining, oh, it looks like they're all just going to die again in Saw X, just like they did in Jigsaw, just like they did in Spiral. Um, fuck off. Seriously, 
what trap in this movie doesn't have a sort of rigged system behind it? The flammable jelly trap. You try and decipher this fucking code on this fucking wall. Seriously, he's got poison running through his veins. He's gonna be starting to get really weak. He's being poisoned while also getting weaker because he's stepping on glass. He's bleeding out. In Amanda's trap, it's not necessarily Amanda that's at the disadvantage, but her dead cellmate. Um, old mate's still alive. What chance did he get? Where was his chance for redemption? You look at Paul in the razor wire. Maze, like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah, he had two hours, but even with my solution in my How to Beat Sword Trap video last year where he takes off the underwear and he just moves the wires and uses it like a barbed wire cover and everything to navigate through, he would still be going too slow. He was moving so fast and cut so deep that they found stomach acid on the ground. And he still didn't make it all the way through and it closed before he died, seemingly. He, one, didn't have enough time if he took it slow and didn't have enough time, it seems, even while he was rushing and cutting himself so deep. And then Jeff. My god, Jeff. No, not that Jeff. This Jeff. In the drill chair. He's just sort of there and he wakes up and then, you know, he was going to be put in a test. Um, the, it was so impossible because it was out of his hands and he had cops to try and figure it out. Otherwise, he was just going to die with these keys. Why was he there, by the way? Hey, I, I just need to ask the question. Why was he there? He woke up before Jigsaw got back. He never got a tape, never really got an explanation. The cops just go, freeze! And then he just triggers the trap and is like, the keys are in that box. Like there is not a single remotely fair trap in this movie because again, Dr. Gordon either has to kill Adam or his family dies. And he will also die in there too. Adam's as good as dead anyway. And granted, he was given a way out, but he, there's a fuck up there. The key went down the drain for reasons which we'll talk about in a later video. But that's the thing that's really funny that is even very apparent with how irrelevant Jigsaw is or John Kramer for this in this movie. But also how prevalent and how important he is at the same time in regards to his ideologies and his philosophies. Now, granted, if I am not mistaken, Saw is loosely based, or at least the serial killer John Kramer is loosely based off of Henry Howard Holmes, who was a real life serial killer. Like, if I'm reading here, Henry Howard Holmes was America's first prolific serial killer who designed a castle of crime with only murder and malice in mind. A man of many aliases and few scruples, H.H. H. Holmes horrified the nation. Inspired by the riches of insurance fraud, Holmes murdered men, women, and children across the country. And if I'm not mistaken, it was sort of like he would torture them and everything in his own ways after taking them into his murder castle, his murder hotel and everything, and doing similar things. I don't know that for facts, correct me if I'm wrong, but at the same time, what's horrifying is that a character like Jigsaw could be in our world today, just living among us right now and we wouldn't even know it. We could one day just be fucking chloroformed and wake up in a room somewhere chained where we are forced to hack off our own arm or forced to hack off our own leg, or as per the new movie, forced to break fingers or whatever to determine life or death. This is entirely possible and that's What's scary about the character of Jigsaw? It's not the horror of like jump scares or anything like that that makes Saw so scary in my opinion, nor is it the violence and gore, it's horrific to look at. But it's the fact that Jigsaw has this very, very flawed ideology that to live and to appreciate life, you must face death. You will be instantly rehabilitated, but in the process, he is com he is committing those convictions himself. Even though he strongly believes that he is a rehabilitator, he is their savior, he is the one who gives them a chance to live or die, to make their choice. And I think that's such a fascinating concept for a villain. Like, even in this movie, that is ever so present in regards to the tapes and what he says, giving them an opportunity, mentioning their past discrepancies, like Amanda was a junkie. When it came to uh, Paul, he was cutting himself, but did he really want to die? And personally, I think Adam and Lawrence Gordons are the most interesting due to how polar opposite they are, but how connected they are at the same time, and the discrepancies they did are so very different as well. Like, I'm going to read some direct quotes from the tapes for each of them as well, and I find them incredibly interesting. Like, right here, Rise and shine, Adam. You're probably wondering where you are. I'll tell you where you might be. You might be in the room that you die in. Up until now, you simply sat in the shadows watching others live out their lives. But what do voyeurs see when they look into the mirror? Now, I see you as a strange mix of someone angry yet apathetic, but mostly just pathetic. So are you just going to watch yourself die today, Adam, or do something about it? 
Like, that right there is inherently interesting and has such an impact on the story and how Jigsaw acts as well. Something as simple as sitting in the shadows and watching other people live their lives and even ruin other people's lives. Like, he was the one taking photographs and giving them to, you know, Detective Tap for Lawrence Gordon. That's why they are connected. But now, is he just going to watch himself die or is he going to do something about it? He's lived a pretty pathetic life for the most part. So, what is he going to do? to have something to fight for. And then you got Dr. Gordon, where the tape basically describes, Dr. Gordon, this is your wake up call. Every day of your working life, you have given people the news that they are going to die soon. Now, you will be the cause of death. Your aim in this game is to kill Adam. You have until six on the clock to do it. There's a man in the room with you. When there's that much poison in your blood, the only thing left to do is shoot yourself. There are ways to win this hidden all around you. Just remember, X marks the spot for the treasure. If you do not kill Adam by six, then and Allison and Diana will die. And I'll leave you in this room to rot. Let the game begin. Follow your heart. And what's fascinating about Dr. Gordon's tape right here is that it does two things that are polar opposite to Adam's. One of them is lists his job, of which shows that he has a successful career, but where he gives people the news to die, or that they are going to die soon, here he will be the exact cause of that, and he knows what Jugsaw is referring to after hearing Adam's tape, let alone the fact that he basically blurts it out for him that his test is to kill Adam, otherwise his wife and daughter will die. And with that as well, it also does one thing, and that lists that Dr. Gordon does have something to fight for, where Adam does not. But Adam has information about Dr. Gordon that Dr. Gordon doesn't think anyone else aside from one person knows, or two, depending on what he told his attorney. And that's what fascinates me about these two characters and their story in this one room. Saw is a movie that 90% of its runtime takes place in a singular room. But the dialogue, the sort of discovery between what makes them so connected, why they were put into a test together, is so fascinating and is so invigorating and interesting to watch and listen to and to witness. Saw didn't start off in a way that made it good because of the traps and the gore and the violence and seeing how fucked up they could be. No, Saw started off because it was two people in a fucked up situation where one really had something to fight for, whereas the other needed to find out if there was anything worth fighting for being his life, if he wanted to really do something with it. And this misconceptual ideology of Jigsaws is ever so prevalent in the flashback tapes and the flashback traps, as well as the one that Dr. Lawrence Gordon and Adam are in. Because he so strongly believes, and we get this idea from this already, that he likes to have a front row seat to his sick little games, which was another hint as to him being in the middle of the bathroom. But it's also the fact that there are multiple players here. There are multiple key players in this game, or what Jigsaw sets out. And his ideology is sacrifice this, and you live. Or do this, and you live. You have been rehabilitated. You will appreciate life. Dr. Gordon never took his wife and his daughter seriously. He always took them for granted for the blessings of which he have. Whereas Adam in general took his life for granted just wasting away in the shadows. They are similar in so many ways and connected in others, but so polar opposite in many others as well. And this is all a testament to the very subtle but brilliant writing of Lee Whannell and James Wan who made this original movie. I'm fully aware that the Saw movies aren't very well reviewed or aren't very well fucking received critically or anything like that, but they are box office hits. They are movies that audiences keep coming to, probably not for the reasons that they did in the original movie, but at the same time, they are inherently influential. So many movies have tried to replicate its success over the last 20 years or so. And they haven't been able to. Even the source sequels in video games couldn't do that because they missed a key element. And that was the fact that the first movie was so good because of its story and its characters and just the ideology behind everything. Jigsaw has such a twisted mind and strongly believes that what he is doing is right and is a good thing to do, which makes him all the more fascinating and conflicting of a character. It makes him completely and utterly psychotic in a way, but he is also very complicated, his mindset behind everything. Ah yes, to make someone appreciate their life, I'm going to kill them essentially. But it's not me killing them, it's them finding a way to kill themselves. But what about Amanda's trap, considering he's the one who put the reverse bear trap on her head and it's not her killing herself, he's the one who put it on her and there's nothing else that triggers it essentially. It's very fascinating and how hypocritical his ideology is. But that's what makes him such an interesting villain 
even in the movies where he's not alive. Saw was such an impactful and very influential horror movie. As I said, so many movies have tried to replicate its success over the years, but doesn't even they don't even understand what made this first movie so good and why it is still so good and has only gotten better as time went on. I showed a mate of mine the other night, Hot and Saw for the first time over a Discord call, and we did a little watch party and everything. He's never watched a Saw movie. He has never really been interested. I'm talking about my mate Hayden. Um... You know, he might watch this video or whatever, but he loved this movie by the end of it. He never saw the twist coming where Jigsaw rises off the ground, which by the way is one of the best twist endings in any movie ever in my opinion. Not just horror, but any movie ever. And then you realizing after he starts standing up everything that's going on because the movie basically spells it out for you at that point, which I don't think it necessarily needs to. It sort of ruins a lot of the rewatchability to point out all these different things yourself, but it's still highly impactful, highly influential, and still very effective to this day. This is a twist that even if you've heard the title of Saw, that ending will still impact you in one way or another. It is a haunting visual. And that way that he closes the door and says, game over, is one of the best final lines in any movie ever. It really shows the presence of Jigsaw, even though he has essentially been pretty absent and pretty irrelevant aside from the game itself for most of the movie. You don't need the big villain of the movie or the franchise to be front and center for it to be impactful and for it to be good and for it to be memorable. Not to mention the brilliant Bane and Switch with Zepp Hindle apparently being Jigsaw, but in reality, he was in another game himself, which is why I don't include him on my list of fucking Saw villains because he is not a villain. He is a victim just like Lawrence Gordon and just like Adam. He was put in his own little game. I don't think it's that he wanted to kill Diana or Allison. I don't think he wanted to do this, but he had poison coursing through his body. It's amazing to see how simple these traps were and these games were in the original movie compared to what we have now. But that's the beauty of it. This movie was so impactful, so successful, and so good that a lot of people completely miss the point of the philosophy and what made it so special. Two completely polar opposite people trying to figure out how to get out of this shitty situation of which they need to, in the process, realize what they have in common and maybe fulfill the tasks of which have been set for them before the clock hits six o'clock. It's a game of time. It's a game of time is money. It's a game of do or die. That your actions do have consequences and do you really have what it takes? Do you really have the balls, the guts? Do you have what it takes to make a choice or make a sacrifice to save your life or another. That's what Saw has always been about. Even in the bad movies, I'll say. It's still kept intact that for the most part. And I say for the most part because there are things we can talk about in other movies regarding that concept and where it's not. But the original Saw movie is borderline perfect. I even say that the bad acting adds to the humanity of the situation and how realistic it feels. Adam's weird dialogue such as, huh, this is the most fun I've had without lubricant. Or, my personal favorite, why don't I spew myself in peanut butter and have a 15 hooker gangbang? These jokes and also the weird reactions and screams add to the humanity of Adam in particular because he is very much so the human character while Lawrence Gordon is the story character as well. The odd acting from Lee Winnell humanizes Adam so much more and makes him more lovable that you care about him a whole lot more because in this situation, we'd be dealing with it in a similar way, I reckon, especially if we were sat in that room for so long. We'd be cracking inappropriate jokes in that fucking moment. It wouldn't be appropriate to talk about a 15 hooker gangbang while smearing peanut butter on you or mentioning fun without lubricant. I I don't think that would be a responsible response at all. I don't think it would be. But to deal with a shitty situation, we sometimes cope in our own ways and Adam is a very sarcastic character. Whereas Dr. Gordon is the complete opposite of the coin, showing once again that he has something to fight for to help him live, and that is his family. He really wants them to live. He is realizing his wrongs and the misdeeds of his ways. And that's the beauty of Saw in my opinion. I think this movie is so good guys. And 19 years later, it's only just gotten better. I know that this is a bit of a messy review and a messy description, but at the same time, I wanted to do this completely unscripted and completely out of my thoughts with a fresh viewing and everything because this is a movie I watch at least once a month and is a movie that is so special to me. And I wanted to talk about it from the fan but also critical side. This movie was shot in 18 days in such a brilliant way with almost no budget and the way they got around certain things such as the actor who played Detective Singh not being able to come on the set one day. On the Blu-ray edition of these movies, you actually see Leo and Al's bottom half of his face when he walks into the shed of the warehouse before 
you know, Detective Singh and Tap end up encountering Jigsaw. The things they do to get around them, the budget cuts and everything, and how creative they had to be to make this movie happen. It shows that less is more in regards to the budget. It shows that it provides a lot of creative freedom as well. Saw is such a special movie that so many have tried to replicate over the years, as I've stated countless times in this video now and I wanted to talk about it in a way that was from the fandom and the critical side as I said and I didn't want to script anything out I didn't want dot points I know that this video might be a bit messy because of that but it's the only way in my mind I can truly express how I feel about Saw 1 with the following movies they'll probably be a bit scripted and have dot points here and there of course but with this first movie it is such a special fucking film that has impacted movies and horror in general. It spawned an entire subgenre, and there are still movies being made today on this franchise, even after it initially ended in 2010. And I am so excited for Saw X for that reason, guys, and the fact that this is between one and two, the two best Saw movies, in my opinion, makes me very excited. And I can't wait to see how they continue that movie from Saw 1 and lead it into Saw 2. I am very intrigued. Like, very, very intrigued. Is this movie just going to open up with a trap and then show Jigsaw walking out the door and what happened after he closed Adam and hearing those screams? That would actually be a very interesting opening, if you ask me. He just closes the door, is like, game over, and then he walks up, he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, I've got another game to get to. How do your eyeballs and fingers sound, my friend? But guys, that is my 19 years later review of Saw. Again, I'm so sorry it's a little bit inconsistent in regards to what I'm saying and a little bit incoherent, but... At the same time, I just wanted to get my proper thoughts out, and this is the best way I could do it for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Look out for my following reviews for Saw 2, 3, all the way through to Spiral from the Book of Saw, leading up to Saw X over the coming weeks, as well as a possible drunk reaction to Saw 3D that I have planned with Hayden, actually. We're in the middle of watching all the Saw movies leading up to Saw X, and I, he wants to actually do a reaction with me on the Saw series. Um, at least for one or two movies, so I was thinking I'm um, Saw 3D and Spiral for him to join me for those, so I think that would be interesting, a drunk reaction. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Look out for more videos and content coming very, very soon. I can't wait to provide them to you guys. Make sure to check out my other content, such as my movie reactions and TV show reactions as well. I put a lot of hard time and effort into those, and it would really mean a lot if you check those ones out, as well as other reviews. I've you know, may have already posted my review of Meg 2, The Trench, thus far. I don't know when this video is going up, um, but I'll have my Gran Turismo review up later this weekend as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Look out for more videos coming very soon, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.